Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family, your business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message I delivered every day. And let me remind you, if you ever have any more finance-related questions, I am the Consumer Advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call any time for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan, a plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. And yes, of course, we are celebrating today. There are some that I will expand on, some that... Uh, uh, I got a bad. I got a bad feeling about this. National Tattoo Day, and I don't think they're talking about Fantasy Island even. For those of you that are old enough to remember that, Wrong Way Corrigan Day. I don't know what that one means. National Yellow Pig Day. Yeah, a little loud there, guys. A little loud on the intake on the on that. Good morning, Arlene. Good to see you with us this morning. National Peach Ice Cream Day. Yeah, we'll go with that one. And for my wife, we'll say, we I'll throw it out there just because I know she loves them. A World Emoji Day. World Emoji Day it is today. And part, we'll also talk a little bit about the fact that we also know that it is Amazon Prime Day. Are you going shopping? What are you getting on your Amazon Prime today? Anything there? Just checking on that one as well. Ah, Dow Jones Industrial Average up 17 points. Oil down just ever so slightly this morning. And I am looking, 10-year Treasury, it's fairly flat. I mean, when you have to go out to three or four decimal places to find out where it's at, what the numbers are, you know, you can just say that that's a, a flat market. We don't need to really focus too much on that at all. So that's where the markets are as well. So we got that one going for us. What's going on in the news? A lot of fallout from the president's uh, press conference yesterday. I wonder what people are wanting from the president. I wonder what their concept was. What did they expect him to do? Did they expect... But he was going to come out, stand on stage, and get someplace by disparaging the the president of Russia. Was that was that that the idea? We know the liberals; they're not going to ever come up with anything that they want to do, anything that they like. The president could have come out, and, and no matter what he said, they were going to get the same kind of a reaction from the liberals yesterday. Just the way it is anymore in our society. What else is going on in the news? Uh, some interesting information out there. The, the new, uh, you got to love this one, the new uh, candidate in New York for Congress, Ocasio, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, in an appearance on PBS's Firing Line Friday, the New York Democrat congressional candidate characterized the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict as an occupation before ultimately conceding that she was not entirely familiar with the geopolitical particulars. Asked to further explain her use of the word, quote-unquote, occupation, the 28-year-old socialist hesitated before she said, I am not the expert on geopolitics on this issue, unquote. And that's who the New Yorkers want to be their congressperson. <laughs> you got to realize how far out of touch some of these individuals are when they are electing somebody that they don't even know and who does not know what's going on in the world stage. Yet that's going to be their elected official right there in New York. Unbelievable. Ah, the GOP leaders are considering a, quote, support ICE, unquote, bill. House Republicans have abandoned a plan to vote on a Democrat-sponsored bill to terminate the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency after the bill's authors said they and their colleagues would vote against it. 
So the authors are going to vote against it. That interesting right there. That's a uh, 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 change a bit. This is ridiculous. Okay, so I guess they are having second thoughts. Flip-flops on the ICE issue. The U.S. is open to meeting with the Taliban. The United States is open to holding direct talks with the Taliban to encourage negotiations between the militant group and the Afghan government to end 17 years of war. It's according to U.S. officials. A Taliban official in the small Gulf Arab nation of Qatar, Qatar told the Associated Press on Monday that no American official or intermediary has been in touch with them to start direct talks and had only heard of it in the media. The administration's willingness to hold direct talks with the Taliban was first reported in the fake New York Times. So that'll be an interesting one. Can you believe anything that comes out of the New York Times? I, I'm just curious right there. I don't know. The New York Times has really gotten into a point where you can't believe anything they say. They used to be a great, great source of information. Who are you watching what's going on in Hawaii? Wow, a lava bomb injures 23 people on a Hawaii tour boat. At least 23 people injured Monday after a lava explosion sent rocks and other debris flying into the air onto a tour boat in waters off the coast of Kopaho, Kapaho which is located on the Big Island, according to Hawaii County officials. A basketball-sized lava bomb punctured the roof of the tour boat, which was carrying about 49 passengers while observing Kil Kilauea's Kapaho. You know, the Hawaiian words are easy to say, right? Ocean entry point, leaving a large hole and seriously injuring at least one woman. The lava explosion stems from ongoing eruptions from Kileo, that began May 3rd. Since then, more than 700 homes have been claimed and many communities rendered unrecognizable. And just a few days ago, lava from one of the most active fissures began forming a tiny island of lava off of Kapaho. So we might have a new island out there in the Hawaiian Islands. So who is to blame for Russia meddling? President Trump said after meeting Vladimir Putin on Monday, he saw no reason to believe his own intelligence agencies rather than trust the Kremlin leader on the question of whether Russia interfered to help him win the 2016 election. Instead, he denounced the stupidity of his own country's policy, especially the decision to investigate election interference. Trump's performance was denounced as treasonous by the communist CIA chief and condemned as shameful by a Republican senator, although other Republicans were more cautious. So John Brennan voting as a communist, and he's the one talking about this president. you got to wonder about that one. The Rasmussen reports daily presidential tracking poll from Monday shows that 45% of likely U.S. voters approve of President Trump's job performance. 54% disapprove. The latest figures include 33% who strongly approve of the way Trump is performing and 46% who strongly disapprove. When the, when the Trump-Putin summit was first announced in June, 38% of voters thought a meeting between the two world leaders would be good for the United States. On back in the news, trying to keep himself relevant, Senator John McCain called President Trump's press conference one of the most disgraceful performances by an American president in memory. The Arizona Republican says the summit with Russia, President Vladimir Putin in Helsinki, was a tragic mistake, quote-unquote. Senator says Trump proved not only unable but unwilling to stand up to Putin uh, like John McCain could do any better, especially being that the American people already proved they don't want anything to do with him. Or Arizona might not even want anything to do with him anymore. Uh, McCain, who has been away from the Senate as he battles brain cancer, said the damage inflicted by Trump's naive, naivety, egotism, false equivalence, and sympathy for autocrats is difficult to calculate, unquote. Uh, I think it's time for Mr. McCain to go and rest and get out of the world of politics just because it seems like the more he talks, the more we realize he doesn't know what he's talking about. And thank goodness he never won as president. Deputy in Florida was held up in traffic Sunday thanks to one incredibly slow pedestrian walking in the middle of the road. A video shared on Facebook by the Marion County Sheriff's Office shows Deputy Brian Bauman ranting about the guy in front of him who is going one mile per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone. Bauman says that the offender is easily 100 and shouldn't even be on the road in the first place. He then turns the camera to show the culprit, which out, turns out to be a... Drum roll, please. 
It was a tortoise <laughs> strolling in the middle of the road. Come on, Grandpa, I got places to be, Bauman jokes as he drives along slowly behind the animal. you got to have a little fun with some of these things, right? Officials in western Arkansas City say residents can finally kick off their Sunday shoes. Fort Smith City Directors recently repealed a 1953 ordinance that essentially outlawed public dancing on Sundays. Locals who knew about the law called it the Footloose Ordinance, nicknamed for the 1984 movie starring Kevin Bacon about a town that banned dancing and rock music. City director Andre Good introduced the repeal after a resident told him about the antiquated law which barred the operation of public dance halls or any place with dancing on Sundays. Ordinance came amid a series of blue laws established in Arkansas that banned all sales and most labor on Sundays, according to the Encyclopedia of Arkansas History and Culture. Few tweets you might have missed it at the AP July 17th, quote, proud to protests, talking at the Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again world premiere in London. Cher says she was proud of the UK protests. Donald Trump, July 16th, the productive dialogue is not only good for the United States and good for Russia, but it is good for the world. And that's a hashtag Helsinki 2018. Another one from the president. I would rather take a political risk in pursuit of peace than to risk peace in pursuit of politics. Got to appreciate that one. Uh, we already talked about Senator McCain. Hillary Clinton trying to, again, just like John McCain, trying to stay relevant. Great World Cup. Question for President Trump as he meets Putin. Do you know which team you play for? Uh, that coming out of Hillary Clinton's mouth after she pays for a Russian dossier. Interesting. Unbelievable. And the communist voter John Brennan. Donald Trump's press conference performance in Helsinki rises to and exceeds the threshold of high crimes and misdemeanors, nothing short of treasonous. And that comes from John Brennan, who was in charge during the time of all of these issues that were going on in Russia. you got to love all these things. All the Monday morning quarterbacks who had their authority but didn't do anything about it. How's that one? They had the authority to take action, did not take action, and then when the pre this president does do something, they second guess everything that he does. You gotta love that. And obviously with McCain, we understand his situation. He tried to run for president and nobody wanted to hear what he had to say. Gotta love that thought as well. Does that tell us something about the value of McCain's opinion? And obviously, we can talk about McCain's integrity as well. Obviously, a war hero, but the integrity of all those years saying that he was against Obamacare when he actually got the opportunity to vote, he went the other way. So you have to wonder, does he just always talk out of two sides of his mouth, or what is the issue with John McCain? And again, nothing taking it away from his being a war hero. It's just you got to wonder about... You know, what, where, where he stands and his 2017-2018 integrity as opposed to that while he was in captivity uh, decades and decades ago. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial market when we come back. Best jobs that pay $20 an hour and don't require a college education. Reasons why we buy real estate. Fact or fiction. Credit score myths. We got those for you. And budgeting for your first summer job after graduation. All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit? And the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? 
How does that make you feel, knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel, knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home value. Refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission. Lending partners will give a credit at closing. The title company has special published rates. And many other service providers have incentives, too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message and as your consumer advocate. I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. In the Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next home loan, Gold Star has the programs for you. They're the only ones I know of that has the fast pass loan approval. Fast pass loan approval saving you potentially ten to fifty thousand dollars on the purchase of your new home. What's happening in the markets right now? Well, we look at it every morning for you. The Dow Jones Industrial Average as we speak right now. It's been a, a interesting morning as it is almost every day. It started out, we went down a little bit. Now we're up 66 points. Oil down 61 cents per barrel. We're not going to look at gasoline. We did that yesterday. But then we look over at what's going on with the bond market. We're not seeing a whole lot of changes in the bond market. We're looking at the 10 year treasury basically flat from yesterday. When you have to go out four digits to get a change, that's pretty much saying it's flat. The Fannie Mae 30 year bond, that one is flat from yesterday as well. We are in, in a very, very tight trading range with the bond, very tight. So if we break out one way or the other, uh, we're going to see some serious changes, and that's why you don't know which way it's going to always break out, but it always does break out at some point, some way. Why are the bonds doing what they're doing? Well, obviously, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell giving his semi-annual testimony in front of the Senate Banking Committee this morning, told you that yesterday, in his prepared remarks, he said that the best way forward to keep gradual is to keep gradually raise interest rates. Seems like he is still leaning towards two more hikes this year, one in September 
and one in December, at least for now, we know that things can change quickly. Powell has said that the economy has grown at a solid pace. Unemployment is expected to fall further, and wage growth is faster than a year ago. Wage growth, however, is not is not causing infl- high inflation. Also of great interest will be the question and answer session, which can always impact the markets, and I will be watching that for you. In housing news, the National Association of Home Builders Housing Market Index, which is a real-time read on builder confidence, remains stable at a strong 68. That was in line with expectations. Current sales remain stable. Future sales dropped a little bit. Buyer traffic increased in any reading. I'm not going to give you that because that's all the, 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 the technical stuff. Chairman, the, their NAHB Chairman Randy Noel said consumer demand for single-family holds is holding strong this summer, buoyed by steady job growth, income gains, and low unemployment in many parts of the country. So we're going to get another read on new construction with housing starts and permits tomorrow morning, so we'll give that one to you as well. Again, mortgage bonds continue to be squeezed between the 25-day moving average and overhead resistance at the 100-day moving average. The bonds tested both yesterday, so we're not going to we're we're still working to figure out which way we will be going that is the mortgage minute again brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage the only ones I know of that have the fast pass loan approval saving you 10 to $50,000 on the purchase of your new home how do they do that well they do it because they're it's it's a simple concept what they're doing in the in that instance is, is they're letting you compete by, by getting you a fully underwritten loan package. You are then able to compete with all of the same as cash loan offers. When you're competing with same as cash, your real estate professional has a big advantage for you. So that's just the issue right there. Again, that's the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage. I get constantly questions. One of the best topics we do on Ron Siegel Radio uh, from the listener standpoint is an issue of credit reports, credit scoring. So I always like to go, we give you a lot of ideas on how to increase your credit score. I want to give you some of the myths as well. So when it comes to your credit score, it's important to separate the myths from the facts. However, most consumers still lack the basic ABCs of how their credit works, and the result is higher payments, missed opportunities, and too often credit mistakes that take them years to recover from. So, today we're going to expose seven common credit myths and bring you the truth behind each one of them. By closing your credit cards and other accounts, your score will go up. Not true may seem like common sense that if you pay off your credit cards and accounts and then close them, your score will rise. But that's not necessarily the case. I've told you that before. In fact, the credit bureaus are in the business of gauging risk for banks, companies, and lenders. And they do so in large part by tracking your on-time payments every month. But when you pay off a credit card and cancel it, not only are you displaying volatility, which is risky, but you're erasing an established record of on-time payments. Opening new credit cards will automatically improve your credit score. Another myth. About 30% of your credit score is calculated based on credit utilization, the ratio of debt balances to total available credit. So, while opening a new card may improve your credit utilization by increasing the amount of your total available credit, it's not a guarantee that it will help your score. If you applied for several credit cards, those hard pulls, hard inquiries, could lower your score, and the abrupt adding of new credit lines may also raise red flags with the credit bureaus, which see the sudden adding of new debt as risky. Furthermore, adding a well-established and credible credit card like American Express or Good Visa, for instance, may help your score, but adding a store credit line, retail card, or other high-risk, low-quality account can drop your score. If you don't plan on buying a home or applying for new loans, you don't nearly need a good credit score. Again, another myth. False. These days, our credit scores are used more than ever. For instance, your credit score not only factors into getting approved for credit cards, auto financing, student loans, etc., 
but dictates what interest rates you pay. Furthermore, your credit score impacts your insurance rates in some states, renting an apartment, cell phone accounts, utilities, and even can help or hurt you from getting a new job. When a couple gets married, their credit reports become one as well. Again, another myth. You may decide to conjoin finances with your new spouse and share bank accounts, credit card payments, and the like, but your credit scores will remain individual. In fact, each person's credit score is based on their own personal identity and social security number. So even with the last name change, your credit will remain your own and there is no couple or married joint credit report for married couples or anyone else. The credit bureaus always report correctly. Oh. (laughs) You know better than that. Big myth. Definitely a fallacy. In fact, the credit reporting agencies are in the business just to collect and sell your information, turning a tidy profit. So their number one priority is not to be a perfect steward of your information. Point blank, the credit reporting agencies make errors all the time. The Federal Trade Commission recently found that at least 20% of all credit files contain at least one error and duplicates, misspellings, outdated information, or other mistakes are very common on credit reports. I'm going to tell you that every credit report has an error on it. I've never seen one that does not. Even more frightening is the prevalence of identity theft, which is expected to affect at least one of every eight consumers this year and will show up as new credit cards, debt, and other accounts on a credit report. Myth. How FICO calculates your score is a big mystery. You know better than that. Yeah, we've talked about that one before. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Fair Isaacs Corporation, FICO, exact credit scoring algorithms are kept a secret. We do know exactly what factors into your score and even how they're weighted for importance. In fact, your score is based on the following. 35% of your score comes from payment history. 30% credit utilization. 15% age of credit. 10% is good mix of revolving installment and mortgage debt. And 10% new credit. Therefore, we know exactly what best practices will yield us a better credit score. If you have bad credit, there's nothing you can do but wait and suffer. Again, that is a myth. It's true that negative items can stay on your credit report for up to seven or even 10 years, depending on what kind of negative blemish it is, like a late payment, collection, foreclosure, or a bankruptcy. But every consumer is legally entitled to dispute any item on their credit report and the onus then goes on that individual credit bureau, Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion to not only respond in a timely manner but to prove that the item being reported is legitimate. And if they don't or can't, then the negative item is removed from your credit report and your score will go up accordingly. In fact, that is the basis of legal and ethical credit repair. Again, legal and ethical credit repair. Not all the credit bureaus are legal. Not all of them are ethical. So if you want to know one of the good ones or some of the good ones, give me a call at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. I'll get you that information. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back... Reasons why we buy real estate. How much will one late payment hurt your credit score? Budgeting for your first summer job after graduation and 10 best jobs that pay $20 an hour and don't require a college education. All that and more, you can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel 
lending team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home you're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal Housing Lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. Find your dream home before somebody else does. NEST, they get the greatest information on there. It comes out as quick as anybody I have seen. It's amazing how fast people get their data when they're using that NEST app. And no, there's no advertising on there, so that makes it another big benefit for our friends that want to use that Nest app. Text again, text Nest, N-E-S-T to 79564. Reasons why we buy a home. We often talk about why it makes financial sense to buy a home. But more often than not, the emotional reasons are the more powerful or compelling ones. No matter what shape or size your living space is, the concept and feeling of home can mean different things to different people. Whether it's a certain scent or a favorite chair, the emotional reasons why we choose to buy our homes are typically more important to us than the financial ones. Number one, owning your home offers you the stability to start 
and raise a family between the best neighborhoods and the best school districts. Even buyers without children at the time of purchase may have these things in mind as major reasons for choosing the locations of the homes that they purchase. Number two, there's no place like home. Owning your own home offers you not only safety and security, but also a comfortable place that allows you to relax after a long day. Number three, you have more space for you and your family, whether your family is expanding, an older family member is moving in, or you need to have a large backyard for your pets. You can take this all into consideration when buying your dream home. Number four, you have control over renovations, updates, and style. Looking to actually try one of those complicated wall treatments that you saw on Pinterest? Tired of paying an additional pet deposit in your apartment building? Or maybe you want to finally adopt that puppy or kitty you've seen online a hundred times. Who's to say that you can't do just that in your own home? The bottom line, whether you're a first-time home buyer or a move-up buyer who wants to start a new chapter in your life, now is a great time to reflect on the intangible factors that make a house your home, and that is the real-time real estate segment again, brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. Put in a few parameters right there, and you will get the information that you are looking for. So one of the other questions I get on a regular basis is how much will one late payment hurt your credit score? Mm, You open up your statement, discover you're late on your credit card payment, or you get a call from a collection agency about a medical bill you forgot to pay, or you check your credit reports and discover a late payment is marring your otherwise perfect payment history. What happens if you miss a credit card payment? How do late payments affect your credit scores? Of course, as with many things related to credit scores, the answer is, and I quote, it depends, unquote. Late payments and good credit scores go together like toothpaste and orange juice. They don't mix. But just how bad is it to miss a single payment? First, it depends on how many days late your payment is. If you missed your credit card payment by one day... Eh, you probably don't need to sweat it. If you're lucky, the lender won't report the lapse. Most lenders do not report missed payments until the account is 30 or more days past due. Suppose you, you a given credit card payment is due on the 15th of the month and you pay on the 25th. Technically, the payment is late. And fees and interest charges may apply, but in most cases, this late payment would not be reported to the creditor by the creditor to the credit reporting agencies. Perhaps your lender may overlook the transgression. Larger creditors like credit card companies usually don't have sophisticated analytic models working behind the scenes that take into account your history of payments. If you've been paying on time for a long time, they're likely to forgive your one-time late payment and let it slide. You might just need to give them a call and chat with them about it and see if you can get them to give you a one-time grace right there. What if you don't luck out and the creditor reports the late payment? Here are three questions that will help you understand the possible impact on your score. Number one, how long ago did the most recent late payment occur? Number two, how severe were the late payments? 30 days late? 60 days late? Was it charged off? How many accounts on the credit report have had late payments? Of these three concerns, the one typically having the most impact on your credit score is the first recency. To illustrate, if a single late credit payment occurred a few years ago and all payments on all accounts have been made on time since, that single late payment will have little negative impact on your score. To put the potential consequences in perspective, a recent late payment can cause as much as 90 to 110 point drop on a FICO score of 780 or higher. Although scores drop from late payments tend to rise again over time, these credit dings can remain on your credit report for seven years. You can expect the effects to last for much of that time. 
Uh, the impact of missed credit card payments or late bill on your FICO score varies significantly depending upon the individual consumer circumstances. Details of the factors that can help determine how much a late payment will hurt your score, any history of account delinquencies or collection references on any account, any adverse legal items on your credit report, the outstanding balance of the delinquent account, the number of other accounts on the file that have currently paid as agreed, and the length of your credit history. The irony is, the better your career credit, the more you may feel the sting. One slip up in your credit score may take a dive, even if you have otherwise stellar credit. The old adage of the bigger they are, the harder they fall applies to credit scores too. If you have a really high FICO score, you'll take a bigger hit for a late payment than someone with a lower FICO score. The best defense is to be meticulous about paying your bills by the due date, but if you do mess up, see if you can't convince the lender or collector to remove the ding from your report. While they may balk at first, you may be able to persuade them to change their mind if you have a good explanation and they believe you when you'd say it won't happen again. If you are concerned about how late payments could be damaging your credit, you can check your three credit reports for free once a year from each of the credit reporting agencies. MyAnnualCreditReport.com is one of the great sources. Again, it's very, very simple here how to do some great preemptive work on your credit scores. Very simple preemptive work. Go on to your banking program. Set up a minimum payment, $50 maybe, say, to go to each one of your credit cards and have it arrive like two or three days before your payment due date. It cycles. So if it's on the 15th of the month, it's almost always on the 15th of the month, unless the 15th follows on a weekend or something along those lines. And then they'll usually push it to whatever the next business day is. So if you have a payment due date of the 15th, go into your bank account, set it for payment on the 13th and automatic. Now remember, if you're trying to maximize your credit score, I've told you this before. The important date is not, the, the payment due date is not nearly as important as the statement closing date. Make sure your balance is as low as possible on the statement closing date. So on that same example, if the payment due date is the 15th, the statement closing date is probably the first. You want to go into your bank account around the 20th, the, the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, onto that credit card, go online, find out what your balance is, then go right over to your online banking system and pay as much as you can so it gets to the credit card company right before the first of the month so that when they report on the first, your balance is as low as possible. You see, even if you make the full payment right after the first, they've already reported so you don't get the benefit of paying off that card and your credit, your credit utilization rate is going to be high when it's reporting. You want it to be as low as possible when it reports in order to benefit you the most. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, 10 best jobs pay $20 an hour and don't require a college degree and budgeting for your first summer after graduation. All that and more, you can reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, shame on you. But the replay is available. Ron Siegel 1, Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. <laughs> Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. 
Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Seagull Lending team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no obligation real estate plan. You be the judge. Send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1 800 306 1990. That is 1 800 306 1990. Great subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRE and MLS 217037 and 145502. And Cal BRE 1869452 and 1866775. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or any time at 800 306 1990. 800-306-1990. The Word on Wealth segment today being brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has the solutions for you. You just need to register on the website. They'll get you the information on, on just a few different items that can help you to help your credit report. Ah, uh, just uh, what are the some? So let's. Uh, what should we get into first? Budgeting for your first summer after graduation. That is the topic this morning. Budgeting for your first summer after graduation. You remember those days? Do you remember the days when you were just graduating? All the excitement coming. We're going to talk about the jobs. In a, min- in a minute, $20 jobs without, $20 an hour jobs without having a college degree. But without college experience, you once took for granted dorms, prepaid meals, parental bailouts. Recent graduates are left to brave the tightrope of financial responsibility without a safety nest. Post grad life is as liberating as it is marked by destitution. For one, shortly after commencement, the burden of loan payments, bills, and daily expenses is quickly thrust upon unsuspecting 20 somethings. This, paired with the fact that entry level jobs are as rare as spotting a senior in the library, culminates in a significant disparity between financial input versus output. According to CNBC, nearly 70% of recent grads were either unemployed or working in a full-time professional job during the summer after graduation. 70%. The older generation is quick to blame millennial apathy, but consider the current state of job hunting, an increasingly competitive job market, which asks applicants to have work experience and an education, unfairly pigeonholes inexperienced grads in career limbo. You've tossed the cap, 
but class is still in session. Here's a lesson in budgeting for recent college graduations. Reassess your lifestyle. You're not in college anymore, which means evaluating your income or lack thereof and adjusting life's luxuries, luxurious accordingly. It might be time to pare back eating out, subscription services, and yes, sorry to say, you got to cut down on the alcohol. Here's a sobering fact. A moderate weekend at the bars can add up to a monthly cost of $500 or more in alcohol costs alone. And I think that's probably understated. Time to take a hard look at yourself in the mirror and confront whether it's sustainable to live a college lifestyle given a recent graduate's income. Get a job or two. It's not uncommon for graduates to carry over bad habits from college, but one pattern you can no longer afford is taking summers off. All good things come to an end, and among other things, is lounging around during the summer. Even if your career J-O-B is T-B-D, you should still fill summer hours with work where you can. This could be a temp position, part-time job, freelance work, or mowing lawns like the good old days. Now is not the time to be prideful about your fresh off the press degree. A job that pays is a good job. And if you're having trouble with some meeting some of these debt, you know, hey, look at this. Nowadays, it's not that difficult. Uh, how many people are using Uber right now? Right, a lot of folks are. How many of you listening to me right now are, are are using Uber? Right. When you do get a chance to enjoy some fun in the sun, you can rest assured that your checking account isn't in a drought. Create a budget and stick to it. While in college, you might have gotten away with poor budgeting, but those days, ah, they're over. Many students are able to skirt around an official budget by supplementing late night pizza. Impulses, purchases, and unplanned trips with excess student loan funds. Unfortunately, the borrowed buck stops here. Start by recording your regular income and comparing it to regular expenses. Segment life's expenses into necessities, luxuries, and the rest. Non-negotiable costs include rent, utilities, groceries, and debt. Only after accounting for these items can you begin stretching your paycheck to other costs. Limiting frivolous spending and adhering to a strict budget is one of the best ways to protect your income and work toward establishing savings, which brings us to the next point, delegate funds to savings. I know it, I know it, savings is not fun. There really is, there is really no way around it. Parting with hard-earned income can feel like pulling teeth, but while it might sound cliche, you'll thank yourself later. There are many practical reasons for saving money, retirement and working toward large financial goals, such as buying a house or some key reasons to pinch pennies. However, some of these milestones can seem abstract and far away when you're newly out of college. If saving seems like an activity to delay until your 30s, consider the short-term benefits of saving money. For example, in lieu of an emergency fund, extenuating circumstances must be billed to your small checking account reserve. Not only can this put a halt to long-term financial goals, but can affect essential payments like rent or groceries. Planning for the unexpected and growing an emergency savings account helps savvy savers from the detriment of unexpected costs. Establish credit while you might not feel like it yet, or even for that matter, you're an adult now, or ever for that matter, you're an adult now. And being an adult means having credit. More than ever, young people make, made skittish by the great recession of their formative years are opting out of debt. Millennials are avoiding car payments, mortgages, and even credit cards in an effort to live within their means. While this might sound like responsible budgeting at first blush, there are actually serious setbacks to avoid credit that become especially apparent at later in life. What this generation fails to recognize is that credit is an important indicator of financial responsibility that is used for many purposes. Want to take out an auto loan? You need credit. Want to rent an apartment? You need credit. What about getting a job? Even then, sometimes your credit score is queried. And they have other ways. I know in certain areas it's illegal to do that, but some way they find a way. I mean, the government can't figure out the ways to, out to outsmart people. It just doesn't work. Here's what this all amounts to. 
Without credit, you significantly limit your mobility as a consumer. In the event you want to graduate from a small apartment to a small house, you need a long-standing record of on-time loan payments in order to receive mortgage approval. Start small, get a credit card with a small limit, pay it off each month. From there, work up to small personal loan. Car loans are popular. Safe lending that can be used as a stepping stone to better credit. Incrementally, you will increase your credit score and better establish yourself as a viable borrower. Improving credit scores will be a lifelong journey as a recent graduate. You're in an especially advantageous position. At best, you have a positive history of on-time payments. That is the, the Word on Wealth segment, again, brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. Ten best jobs that pay $20 an hour and don't require a college degree. So, how do you want to make $20 an hour or more without a college degree? The Job Search website has just released a new list of 10 hot jobs that meet the following criteria. They pay around $20 or more an hour, have grown over the last five years, are projected to grow over the next five years, and don't require a college degree. Got to love that. The list provides the typical entry-level education requirement, which can vary depending upon the employer. Some of the jobs may require a high school diploma and additional training or include some college. So the number one, electricians, $26.33 an hour. And you need a high school diploma and an apprenticeship. Plumbers, pipe fitters, steam fitters, $25.76 an hour. Computer user support specialist, 2550 industrial machine mechanics 2487 surgical technologist 2268 heating air conditioning and refrigeration mechanics $22.39 chefs and head cooks 2154 fitness trainers $20.23 medical records and health information technicians 1996 and self enrichment education teachers 1991 there's just a few of them That'll get you there. And as always, we ask you, set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com and remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.